Hey everybody, I'm here with Chris Ellis, who is the CEO of Audio Cardio, which is an application that helps people restore their hearing loss, among many other things. Chris, I'm happy to be here with you on the Anti-Aging Hack Show. Nice to, have, nice, nice to talk to you and I'm glad to be here. Great. So Chris, tell us more about what Audio Cardio, which is your company, what do you guys do? So Audio Cardio is a mobile app that basically um, aims to protect, maintain, and um, reverse your hearing loss. So we do that using a, uh, a sound therapy that we've come up with that uh, quickly assesses your hearing and generates a personalized sound signal to stimulate the cells. That's so cool. So as we age, we know hearing loss accelerates as well as people that are maybe in very loud environments, they probably have hearing loss as well. So you found a technology that can reverse and let allow me to hear the frequencies that I can't anymore? Correct. So um, my co-founder is a, is, is a musicologist and a, uh, and a scientist. And so um, he's also a music composer. So over time, he knew his hearing was deteriorating. And so he developed a technology that could better assess your hearing, as well as found a, a method to basically stimulate the cells at just the uh, inaudible level to help those neurons fire again and create new neural pathways so that your brain can now process the stimulation of sound. Wow, that is so cool. And I have a lot of questions. But before we dive in, Chris, I'd like to ask you, how did you get involved with audio cardio and what's your background before audio cardio? Yeah, so um, my background prior to audio cardio was, um, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, always working for startups, um, been a part of, of, of five startups uh, over the last 15 years. Wow. And so over the last um, five or six years, I've been doing a lot of consulting and advisory work and just really looking for what that what that next project is going to be. What's that next company that now I wanted to build? Um, and I was introduced to my to my co-founder about three and a half, four years ago um, through a mutual friend. And through that introduction, he and I just started developing a relationship, doing due diligence on each other, his technology, et cetera. And um, interestingly enough, at that around that same time, my grandfather was showing um, signs of, of cognitive decline. Um, I'll, I remember vividly, um, we went out to Montana. I took him on a fishing trip, um, knowing that, you know, as he's starting to age, I wanted to spend more time with him. But during that trip, uh, we already knew he had some cognitive decline. Um, however, you know, spending that kind of time with him, I really got to hear all the discrepancies in his, in his memory, for lack of a better term. And so, um, when I came back from that trip, you know, I, I, I started doing a lot of just research online about cognitive decline and, you know, how to slow it down, anything I could do to educate myself. And I found that hearing loss was tied to cognitive decline and dementia. And um, there's a few studies out there, John Hop Johns Hopkins being one of the, the biggest ones. Um, and so, you know, seeing all those results and, and just those studies, I, I, you know, and this technology, I gravitated towards it and I really started to learn more and more about it. And um, that's, you know, the, the reason why I want to get behind this. And, you know, of course, my grandfather, you know, did he have hearing loss? Absolutely. He was a hydraulics engineer in the Air Force. Then he worked at a major airline as a hydraulics engineer. And this is back in, you know, the 50s and 60s when I, I, I really doubt hearing protection was was, you know, top of mind. Yeah. And so being around these type of environments, you know, he had severe hearing loss, if not profound, and, and you know, never did anything to treat that hearing loss. He was too proud for hearing aids, um, you know, slowly started to disengage as he couldn't, you know, hear us at restaurants and started to isolate. So all the classic things that you hear about hearing loss and isolation and depression is exactly what, what we witnessed and, and experienced ourselves. This is so cool that this was influenced by your grandfather, so it was firsthand. And that's the reason I got into anti-aging research and longevity research is because I would see my parents and go see them every once, once every year. And every time I saw them, their energy levels were lower. They had more wrinkles. They were just complaining of aches and pains. And I said, goodness, how are we going to travel the world, Europe, wherever you want to go together if you can have all these aches and pains? So that's why I got into it. And it's so cool to hear that that's why your grandfather caused you to get into this hearing business. Uh, so let me ask you, Chris, who's the typical audience for this application for hearing loss and for reversing that? Yeah, well, 
the thing with hearing loss is that, you know, it can be anyone at any age. Some people are born with certain types of hearing loss. Some people develop it as, as they age, of course. Um, what we've found, at least in, in our early tests, of course, it's, it's, it's a little bit of an older demographic, people who have the, the issue today, who are experiencing um, difficulty in certain environments and settings when they're, when they're like, for instance, restaurants and being able to engage with their family and friends. Um, that's where we see it mostly. We also see mu a lot of musicians, of course, have, have hearing loss, sound engineers, um, people who work in loud environments like restaurants, um, people who work at music festivals. So just think about those types of environments, construction. I mean, it really applies across the board. But predominantly in the older demographic, having the issue now, wanting to find some sort of a solution before they have to resort to things like expensive hearing aids or potential surgeries that are far more invasive. This reminds me of a visit to an optometrist that I did for my eyes a couple of years ago. And she told me that it was it happened to be a she doctor, but she told me that after 40, my eyesight is going to degrade substantially. And I said, there is no way. It's, 40, it's 2020 right now. How could I go down the steep path of losing my eyesight or it degrading at least the nearsightedness? And she said, it just happens. I can't explain it. It's going to happen to you. It happens to everybody. It appears that for hearing loss, it's not that sudden. There's not a barrier of 40. Once you break, it's just downhill. It looks like, and I don't know this, but I want you, your input is, is it more gradual over time? It's, it's absolutely gradual. And that's why a lot of people don't know it's an issue until it's an issue <laughs> until it's a problem. It's, it's, you're having a little bit more difficult time, but then it's, oh, it's because it was this allowed environment or it's, it's, it's situational often. Yeah. And so, um, and your brain also, you know, it's very pliable and it's, it's, it's incredible. It's, it is the processor of our entire ecosystem, our personal ecosystem. And so it adapts to its new normal. So you're constantly adapting to this new adjusted level of hearing, if you will, until it becomes such a problem. And you're like, wait, now I, I, I this is now a, a major issue. And that's usually when people start to look for solutions where we want to be both on the preventative side and help potentially, you know, uh, strengthen the hearing. Yeah, that's, it's really cool that you bring it up too, because what I found is when men or women, we start losing, what are the first signs of aging? You lose your hair, you start losing hair, you start losing your vision, and if you start losing your hearing, your brain starts to rationalize that I'm getting older, I'm old, right? There's people in their late 20s, early 30s that start claiming proudly that, oh, I'm old, I, I don't have the energy anymore. And I go, what are you talking about? You were young. But it's these little signs that the brain picks up and then it starts, you know, we're made up of our thoughts, 60,000 thoughts every day, and most of them are repeated. So if we start repeating the thought loop of I'm old, then you just, it's downhill from there because it's psychosomatic, right? The body follows what the brain says and then the brain notices uh, problems in the body and it starts to think that I'm getting old. So any way we can fight back or reduce the signs of aging, I'm all about it. So I'm glad I met you, Chris. I want to ask you a couple more questions about the technology itself. Now, you said that we lose certain frequencies because let's say we went to a shooting range. I went to a shooting range and uh, I didn't have adequate protection. It was many years ago and I was shooting out of this AR and literally for the next three days, I couldn't hear. I had tinnitus in my ears and I couldn't hear right. And luckily that went away. But I can see how it's so common that you're exposed to loud noises around concerts and and construction workers, for example, you'd start to hear, athletes even, you'd start to hear those challenges in your hearing. So what I hear you say is that even though we've lost or the hearing cells are damaged, if we start to play some of those frequencies where we can barely hear them, the, the brain or, or the cells in our ears start to pick up on those frequencies and then therefore we can restore the hearing that we had at those frequencies so we can almost go back 10 or 20 years with our hearing. Correct. So yeah, it falls right into the science behind what we do. And so um, our application is a once a day, one hour therapy. Um, and you can do it while you, you don't have to engage with the app. You can do it while you go for a walk, while you're doing emails or focused on other things or even playing music over it. But because it's a once a day, one hour therapy, what we're essentially doing is we are finding your threshold of sound. Every individual is different, right? We all have a different hearing pattern or a hearing ability, or if you will. And so Based off of that threshold of sound, what we do is we stimulate the cells 
right at the barely audible, if not inaudible level. And so by doing that, what we're doing is forcing these cells, the neurons inside your, inside your ear, to reach their threshold. These cells either fire or they do not. Um, and so what's happening over time is they become desensitized. And when they become desensitized, it takes more for them to hit their threshold that tells them to fire. So by us consistently stimulating the cells, we're forcing that firing. And by forcing that firing, it fires and then it connects to the next cell which connects to the next. And that's how that signal is sent to the brain so that your brain says, oh, this stimulation is sound and it processes it. And that's how you recognize my voice and I recognize yours. Um, so not only are we helping promote these pathways and create them, but we're supporting them by continuously stimulating them and making them permanent, if you will. Now, again, you will degrade as you age and you go back into your environments, you get sick and do other things. But our goal is to help open up those pathways and make it easier for your body and basically to process that sound, which means it has to get to your brain. That is such a cool description, Chris. It's like there's a bunch of dominoes from your ear to your brain. And the first one falls and the second one falls. And then pretty soon all of them are connected and you're starting to respond to those frequencies or those sounds which you thought you'd lost. Now, let's get into the, the user experience, if you will. So I've downloaded the app and I played with it a few days ago. Really cool, really easy to set up. And what I found is once I got into the app, it asked me to calibrate both of my ears to the barely audible level. So I, there was, I think, three or four sounds that it had me do on different frequencies. So I went on my left ear and then I picked three or four times on the lowest sound that I could hear in a quiet room. And it did that on my right ear. What is that doing for so, the user? Yeah, that is assessing your threshold of sound. So what you would do is, again, go to a very quiet room, you know, connect your headphones to, to, your, to your mobile device, and then um, each of those frequencies, you'd want to set them at the barely audible level. And that's how we know, based on these headphones, this mobile device, and that volume setting, this is your minimum threshold of sound for that range of frequencies. And we do that for the left ear and the right ear, as you described. And by doing that, we understand that threshold and our algorithm will generate that personalized sound signal or that sounds therapy. And that's your personal therapy that you will use for an hour a day. And it's again, almost inaudible. And over time it gets louder and louder. And that's your cue that my hearing has, has changed mm -hmm. for the better. Mm -hmm. And then you would go retake that assessment and you would get your new therapy for your new level. And then you continuously do that to, to improve your threshold of sound across the board. Okay, so that's great. So I set up my initial audible frequencies. Then what's so cool about the app is you can go in the app and you can connect it to your Apple iTunes, or sorry, Apple Music, or Spotify, or YouTube, and other sources. You can pull your music into and create a playlist within the app, and you just play your music as you're going about your day. For an hour a day, you want to use the app, and that... And what I found is I couldn't hear the frequencies of the app. I was just hearing the music. And so, you know, I checked a couple of times to make sure it was still going. And it was. And so that's what's so cool is it's working in the background as it's building up your, your sound levels back to where they were. You don't have to worry about it. You can go to the gym. You can go wash your dishes. You can go for a walk. It's just part of your routine. So it's non-disruptive, which means it takes me five seconds to set up and five seconds to get off. That's so cool. How did you come up with that design? Yeah, so we, you know, it's a once a day, one hour therapy. How do you get someone to, to do that for an hour? We, we're all busy, you know, just getting to the gym is difficult, mm -hmm. but we all do something for an hour, whether it's working out or checking email or, or going for a walk, hopefully. Um, and so, so we want to integrate our technology into your day-to-day -day life. How do we become part of you, you know, taking the shower, brushing your teeth and, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it's you work out or you check email next, but we want to be, you know, put your headphones on, check email. You don't have to concentrate or, um, you know, stay engaged with the application. So we wanted to find a way to make it easy for people to digest this, this sound therapy. And so Chris, how did you come up with one hour? Could you, could I do it for four hours if I'm the athlete that I want to over deliver? Um, you know, we haven't done testing at, at that level. We did um, five, five clinical trials, preclinical trials, um, including a double blind study between Stanford University and Palo Alto Medical Foundation um, um, to, to basically test our underlying tech, which is called threshold sound conditioning. Mm -hmm. And that's the name that we gave it. It's conditioning, again, because you don't have to actively, actively engage. And so um, that's what we tested. 
the one hour a day. And that's when we got the effect of after two weeks of using the application for one, or the, the, the sound technology. So the threshold sound conditioning technology for an hour a day, um, individuals had a change in their hearing ability by 10 decibels or more within those two weeks. And then right. others continue to improve as they continue to use the application. So the results are that quick. In two weeks, I can get back 10 decibels of hearing? Potentially. That worked for 70% of the people that we tested the application wow. on. That is super cool. And that was my next question to you is, let's say that I use it for an hour a day. How long do I need to use the application for to come back to... I guess whatever age range or whatever hearing I want to go back to. Um, and it's that good, great question. It's very different for for everyone, depending on you know how much your biology allows you to bounce back to where you used to be. It could depend on age and things like that as well. But across the board, from we tested this on people from eighteen all the way up to seventy eight, and that was that was the result. Um, but you know, as you continue, it depends on where you are on the threshold, right? If you're really high and you can make a lot of improvements that, you know, of course you can use the application much longer. Um, but, you know, we would say that, you know, targeting each frequency, range of frequencies, there's five for each year, about two weeks at least for each one to really get there. So, you know, it's at least a 10 week treatment. So we would say, um, you know, use the application for, for two to three months and then use it as maintenance after that. Once you plateau, every body plateaus, right? No matter how much I work out, I'm never going to be, you know, six, four and 300 pounds, right? No. And so you will plateau, but it's always good to have maintenance as well, right? And, 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 and use it a few times a week at least. Okay. And so let's say that I use it a few times a week. What is the, I believe there's an app subscription model. So I pay month to month as I go along. What does that look like? Yeah, so so for the first for the first twenty one days, it, it's free to try. We, we want everyone to experience the application and see if it works for them. You should know if this is going to be that something that is potentially going to have a good effect on on your physiology, basically, and your hearing. And so um, by by doing that during those twenty one days, you should know. And then beyond that, it's 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 fourteen ninety five a month or a hundred dollars a year, which is you know far more affordable than other solutions on the market. Sure. And I want to get back to other solutions. You'd said that, you know, for a few weeks, two to four weeks, maybe I can improve my hearing to 10 decibels by 10 decibels. And therefore, Chris, do I have to then go back and recalibrate and find the new frequencies that I should be listening to, to move forward and get better? Yeah, absolutely. So the way our, our, our technology works is that we're always targeting the frequencies that are the most impaired. So the ones that are high, that you that are basically the highest threshold that you have the hardest time hearing. And by targeting those frequencies, we can slowly start to move them down. And as they move down and the next one becomes the most impaired, we start focusing on that one. And we continuously pop from frequency to frequency to eventually bring your entire threshold of sound That's down. Cool. So you start chipping away at the hearing loss until, what do I have, or a hearing of a 17 year old? Uh, you know, it just depends on, on, on every individual. I know me personally, I had, um, my experience was very different, right? I, I was noticing a difference within five days. Some people take 10 days, some people take the full two weeks. Um, but I was able to start to chip away very early and was able to get myself back into basically the teens when it came to the decibel level, mm. which I felt like and now I know I can hear, you know, I'm biased too, but I can, I know I can engage better in restaurants. I'm, I'm leaning in less with one ear or the other. Um, I've just, you know, and I'm very conscious of that, of how my behavior is changing as we um, continue to use our, our own application internally. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Like sometimes I've had to lean in in restaurants too, and I think my hearing is great, but I've, str I've struggled because there's so much loud ambient noise or other people talking around us. So that's pretty cool that you say that. And if you're a man or a woman watching and you don't want to be surprised by your spouse walking up on you and surprising you, maybe this is another cool application uh, of the technology. Now, Chris, the other question I have is, why would somebody use audio cardio versus hearing aids or whatever else is out there? What's the difference? Yeah, so, you know, audio cardio is a mobile app 
you can you can do it from the convenience of your own home. Um, you can use it as a first screening, not a medical diagnosis, of course, but you know just to see where your thresholds are, and you know use it more as a a, a preventative measure or a wellness measure um, to get you know to tackle these issues because they're coming. Um, we we all know that that hearing loss is pretty much inevitable, um, and so if we can get in front of that and be more conscious of our hearing health and just you know, educate ourselves and be more aware of how important our hearing is. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, um, take it for granted these days because it's not something that's visual. It's it's very, um, as, as, you know, it's gradual as as we had talked about earlier. And so, you know, we get used to this new normal, but education and awareness are are, are important um, in, in you know this mission. Absolutely, it's, and I I'd, I'd never known this application existed, but it's such a cool model now that I think about it. You can get a subscription to the application, improve your hearing on the go while you're doing other things for an hour a day. And it's like you said, it's very little impact, if no impact to my daily schedule. Because yes, I'll be listening to music. I'm doing my drive. I'm going to the gym. Why not improve my hearing while I'm at it? So as a guy that's always trying to improve himself and get better and younger with age, I love this concept. Uh, The next question I have for you, Chris, is we talked about, you know, when I had gone personally, when I had gone at, at a driving, not a driving range, but a shooting range to shoot some guns. I know I I tinnitus in my ears for three days. And I told you the story before we got on the, before we got on the call here, um, is that I was losing my mind for three days because it was a very loud sound and I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't really sleep and I couldn't work. So I was doing Google searches all day to try to find a solution. Luckily, I found this crazy forum that told me to tap the back of my head 51 times and I did it and somehow it went away and I was thankful. I almost cried. I'm so thankful. Does the application help with tinnitus? First, that's that's fantastic that that happened. There's lots of people who, who suffer from tinnitus or tinnitus, depending on where you're from. And, um, I don't even you know. know they, yeah, they, they call it different things depending on where you're from. And um, so, yeah, tinnitus is something that is debilitating. It can, you know, you experienced it. Um, some people have that 24-7, 365. They can't sleep. They can't work. Um, you know, there's unfortunate, um, you know, the measures that people also also take into their own hands, unfortunately. And so um, tinnitus is a symptom of hearing loss. If you can potentially uh, strengthen hearing and get you out of a certain range where your tinnitus lives, then we could potentially help um, reduce, reduce the effects of it. We do have multiple people that we've talked to um, who have had tinnitus and used the application and it's definitely reduced it based on their experience. Now, this isn't for everyone again, but, you know, they didn't have very many other options and they were willing to try anything. They, you know, I get all these stories about we've tried lotions and potions and all sorts of anything, anything. And, um, you know, using our application was able to give certain um, certain people relief. Yeah, I completely understand because I was there at least only for three days, luckily. But at that point, I was getting desperate to do anything to reduce this ringing, constant, loud ringing in my ears. So if your app can help with that, man, kudos. Chris, you've been working with a lot of partners, very cool, very well-known partners in the industry like Stanford University and others. Tell us about that a little bit. How are you working with them? Yeah, so, um, you know, with Stanford University, you know, we contacted them to help us, you know, verify that our technology is what it is to prove the efficacy. And so, you know, we reached out to them and, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was the gold standard. And the gold standard is a double blind trial um, where, you know, the participants don't know what they're getting. You know, the the scientists and the, the people that are administering the trial aren't sure if they're giving you the right one, you know, if they're giving you the placebo or if they're giving you our therapy. And we were able to show uh, beyond a doubt and with significance that our technology was effective and that it wasn't just a a placebo effect. And so we're very excited about this technology and working with, you know, reputable institutions to further prove the efficacy of what we can do, but also to really get that type of support because before us, it was not, it it was thought that it wasn't possible to potentially reverse hearing loss or strengthen your hearing or just bring you back to a place where you could communicate better again. And so that's, you know, that's truly our mission is to be able to deliver this technology to as many people as possible. That's really cool. Now, so you're playing sounds into your ears, Chris. It's not that disruptive 
into my system, if you will. But did you have to get any kind of regulatory approval for this application? Um, so yeah, we did. You know, we we did contact the FDA. We've we've spoken to them as well. But because we're non-invasive, we've limited the the level of the sound, even of of our of our sound therapy, to a point where even the World Health Organization would say it is below the limit of where it is damaging. That's for liability reasons as well. Um, but we we want to make sure that we're not going to harm anyone and that you know it's people listen to their music far louder than our therapy for more than an hour a day so you know we want to just make sure we cover our bases on the wellness side um you know our technology again has gone through those through those trials and at, at one point we did have fda clearance through the 510k process as a tinnitus masker mm. so so we did we did prove that we could be a tinnitus masker that had that pathway and a predicate before um but again, we want to we want to strengthen people's hearing. We want to do something that no one else has done, and that's why we continue to do more studies. We continue to do more trials, and um, you know, receive feedback from people who are using the application today because those stories are more powerful than any statistic I can give. I can throw out numbers from Stanford and da da da, but how does it help me? What does it do for my life? And how did it change my life? And how how does it make it better for me and my family and so it's really interesting to see all the ancillary effects and how it affects all not just on the secondary physical and mental health issues but how it affects the family and the dynamic of the family um, of people you know and their and their aging parents or grandparents so it's, it's really it's really great to see yeah that's cool now chris what's next for audio cardio yeah, so right now we are um, about to launch the app fully on, on iOS here in the next few weeks. And so we're really, really excited about that. Um, and, you know, just really driving education around, around hearing health and awareness that our technology exists, um, creating more user stories and working with different institutions to continue to, you know, run studies, prove more efficacy, and you know, get involved with different types of uh, industries like the music industry. Um, of course, musicians and sound engineers obviously are around sound all the time. It's their livelihood. You know, preserving that is, 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 is how they make their money. So the longer we can preserve that from them, the better they are economically as well. So this has economic implications for people. And then of course, you know, um, you know, in performance with athletes, high performance hearing and balance, wanting to move into being able to see if we can help athletes as well. Um, and then of course, you know, there's people like me and you who just, you know, need to have, you know, want to preserve our hearing. Um, and then, you know, there's all types of different applications and industries we can go into, but we want to just, you know, focus on the people who need the help today and then slowly work our way out into different industries that we can be helpful to people. Now, speaking of athletes, I've been to plenty of football games and soccer games. And as you know, it gets really, really loud in there. And there's a ton of false starts during a lot of these games. So if you could just hear better the quarterback calling out or whatnot, you could potentially reduce the penalties on your team. So if you're an athlete and you're, and you're listening, it's maybe a good application for you. Um, Chris, where can people find Audio Cardio online and how do they download the app? Yeah, so you can um, find more information about Audio Cardio at uh, www.audiocardio.com. And then the app is currently available in the iOS app store. So on Apple devices and Android will be coming um, at the end of this year or early, early January. So our goal is to be able to get this out to, again, as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. That's great. Chris, you mentioned there was a special bonus or a, or a coupon that listeners of this or a special offer, I should say, that listeners of the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast could get on. What would you say that is? Yeah, so basically anyone that's that's listening and tuning in today, um, we're, we're going to offer a, a uh, three month trial mm -hmm. so that everyone will give a promo code and that promo code will allow you any listener to implement input that into the app and use the app for 90 days. That's really cool. Thank you for doing that, Chris. Absolutely. And I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you for being on the show. All right. Thank you.